Woods apologizes for the situation. But fire officials say candles can explode if you leave them on too long and there's no wax. Don't make the Hulk angry. Well, it doesn't seem like this little pup could really be angry, but a dog in Canton, North Carolina gave birth to this little Hulk. The German Shepherd puppy was born with lime green fur. So what happened? Well, a veterinarian says that the sack the puppy was in during birth stained his fur. The color will eventually fade. See something, say something, or maybe you should do something. A Greensboro couple stopped a man trying to break into their neighbor's car near the Adams Farm in Hunter Hills area. Allison Watley says she caught the person on her security camera. The car was locked and the suspect left. The next morning, the same person tried to break into her neighbor's car. That's when she and her husband jumped into action and scared the burglar away. Greensboro police always say that you should call them if you suspect any suspicious activity. So showers, you know, we had a little bit of rain yesterday and then now it looks like things are kind of lightening up a little bit, but the, the I would say good news for me because I kind of like it to feel a little bit like winter, but yeah. now we're going to cool down a good yeah. bit. The word bundle up, we haven't said that right. in a while and we're actually going to really need to do that. We will up. need to do that. Let's talk <laughs> about this forecast with temperatures that, uh, you know, now we're starting to see this drop down. You know, if you were watching over the last few days, we've seen temperatures mostly in the 60s at this hour. 59 in Greensboro and Winston-Salem and High Points, all the three major metros in agreement there. Wind gust have been an issue today. You can see the wind gust, uh, you know, there we're looking uh, at, uh, well, probably around 30 to 35 miles per hour, just depending on where you are in the triad. But if you head up north and west toward the mountain communities, Boone with a wind gust near 50 miles per hour today. Here's your forecast heading into the night. It is clear and cold tomorrow morning, 29 for the probably step out temperature. We usually hit that around seven or so in the morning. Uh, tomorrow, though, mostly sunny, high clouds, maybe a little bit of that late. And again, as we've mentioned, cooler air moving in 44 degrees. Seven day forecast. We do have a chance of rain. You know, yesterday we were talking about will we see a pellet of sleet here or there Saturday morning? I think if we were to see that, it'll be mountain and foothill communities, not so much over the triad. Cooler high, though, 40 on Saturday and a high of 48 in sunshine on Sunday. We are digging in, uh, digging deeper into a story you all keep clicking on on our website. So we reported to you yesterday that North Carolina falls in the top 10 list of increased human trafficking states. Well, the State Department of Public Safety says 20,000 women and children are sold every year in the U.S. So let's break that down for you. In 2018, nearly 11,000 cases were reported nationwide. 287 of those cases were here in North Carolina. Now, California is the number one state for reported cases. They had nearly 1,700 reports. Now, of the 11,000 reported cases, nearly 8,000 were sex trafficking cases. The second highest type of trafficking was labor trafficking. Now, there are some ways that you at home can identify some signs of human trafficking, and you do need to pay attention to this because you may have encountered someone that is being trafficked. So the person is fearful, they're anxious or submission and submissive. They may be malnourished or have physical signs of abuse. The person owns very little and has no control of money. Now, they may claim they're investigating and visiting an area and they have no sense of a permanent address. Now, remember, Remember, the signs can vary based on the type of trafficking. All right, so a lot of folks, of course, talking about this on uh, Facebook. Let's check in with uh, Brian Bennett right now. I mean, this is a, a nobody likes to hear that their state is one of the top states for this. What are people saying? Uh, people are saying a lot. It's kind of a scary thing to actually think about, too, guys. Sure um, is. Miss Santana said it's been happening for years. Unfortunately, I'm glad it's starting to get more attention. Uh, Ms. Miller says, <coughs> everyone, please be careful and always be aware of your surroundings at all times. Uh, Lisa said everyone needs to be aware of their surroundings. Put your <coughs> devices down and look around. And I think that's a big one because we're so, you know, into our phones and so many things are going on. Sometimes you have a tendency to look down and not really pay attention to what's going on around you. Yeah, and you really have to think about this. North Carolina and the triad specifically is good in a sense for human trafficking because of the location, because we have so many highways that intersect our area. It's easy for someone to get picked up and they get drawn away and driven somewhere. away. And so that's why a lot of trucking companies, they do human trafficking awareness trainings with their drivers so that the truckers are able to spot those signs as well. And what you said well. is the exact same thing that police always say the reason that drugs move through this area 
because of I-40 going across the country all the way to California, and then I-95 is a major highway that goes through North Carolina. So, and that's exactly why, because it's easy to get in and out of our area. So we have to keep an eye out yeah. for that. All right, keep weighing in on that on Facebook and let us know what you think. Uh, right now, let's talk about what's coming up. Uh, this is actually a lot of stories for pet lovers coming up here. A new way for you to have fun with your furry friend, and one furry friend is whipping her owner into shape. I love the video you're going to see. And another, raising awareness for strays. Yeah, so keep talking with, with us. Use that hashtag word for number two, word five. Do you have a dog at home? What type of dog do you have? <laughs> Coming up, we're going to tell you some music that you can apparently play at home when it's when you're gone to entertain your pet. That's coming <laughs> up next. Welcome back to your four to five. Thanks for connecting with us today. We appreciate it. Gonna have fun. Yes, and we love to know where people are watching from. So if you are watching the stream, let us know when you're uh, where you're watching from. We always have one guy, Tony, who's watches from New Zealand. Yes, it's amazing. Which I love that. Homer just said he's in every single day here. He said, looking forward to cool temperatures. I don't know if you're going to like some highs in yeah. the 30s. We'll see how that goes in a little bit. Make sure you use the hashtag word four number two word five so we can see your uh, post there. All right, pet owners, you don't want to miss this next story coming up. Research shows more than 70% of pet owners leave music on. For their pets when they're alone. Spotify has custom playlists now just for pets. Believe it or not, you go to Spotify, you select your type of pet, rank energy level, friendliness, and courtesy. Next, you upload a picture and a name to get that customized playlist. That's it. Easy as that. Never thought I'd see that. That's interesting. But I do like the choice here on the graphic, Atomic Dog by George Clinton. <laughs> that's a great song. So, so a chihuahua, is that going to have music that's going to get it bouncing <laughs> off the walls versus like a basset hound that just wants to relax and it's kind of classical music? It'd be uh, smooth jazz. Smooth for the jazz. Basset. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Know. Well, you know, we talk about music and we talk about pets. Now, this is something that you really are going to find interesting. So there is this pet owner who works out with her dog, and the dog, I'm telling you, works out better than a lot of us at home. I want you to meet Tesla, the Australian Shepherd, who apparently loves working out. So she does burpees, 
Wall Walks. This pup does it all with a, I'm sure they have their own playlist too. And she has her own Instagram page. Now I want you to get this. This dog, Tesla the dog, has 36,000 followers. There's something about pets and dogs that people love to just like those photos on Instagrams. The same thing with cats too. I love, I mean, that, that kid's working out. That's a real workout right. too. It's not even just, you know, playing around. That cracks Yeah, if up. I try to do that, I'm going to land on my head. <laughs> How you get a dog to do that, I don't know. I don't know. All right, so uh, a dog in New Mexico, they call him Subway Sally. We've been singing that to the tune of Mustang Sally all day today. Uh, every night for the past year, Stray walks up, look at this video, begging for food at the subway. How could you say no to that? The employee there took a liking to Sally and shared the video on TikTok. It went viral. The employee just reminded people everywhere to, t to care about strays and not just on social media. Uh, they have not taken Sally to a shelter yet. The closest shelter they say is 20 miles away and they don't want to take her because they say the shelter has a high kill rate. So those employees still continue to feed her as she comes to the subway each day. I'm telling you that dog is eating better than most dogs out there with that good food. You know, the with the bacon and the ham. Brian, Chicken. I mean, we have all these stories about dogs. Uh -huh. What are your thoughts? They're doing amazing things. Do you have a pet? I can't remember. I don't. You, I don't. I mean, these are making me want one so bad, like, honestly. And then, uh, what was it, Tesla? We can go to the gym together. Right, you know, see? Lose right. a couple pounds. Look, you have a kid on the way. You do not need to get a dog right, right. now. You're, You're probably to, right. you got to adjust. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and that's, Homer's writing here on Facebook, that's a cool dog. That is yeah. a really cool dog. Oh, and Kathy from Norfolk is in the room, too. Jump in. We're on WFMY News 2's Facebook page so you can continue the conversation. All right, we'll be right back. Hello. Uh, you're talking about the rainbow cake, right? Yeah, I have Alan Hooks, Karen Bell, Alyssa. I can't say her last name. Okay, let. <laughs> let me refresh and see. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Welcome back to the four to five. I want you to take a look at this photo. You can see the face of a happy teenager, a 15 year old birthday girl. But this day or the day to come after it wasn't so happy for Kayla Kenny. So Kenny was expelled from a Kentucky private school for reportedly violating the school's conduct multiple times, including this time. Well, mom says the principal emailed her saying that the birthday photo was opposed to the school's philosophy. She attends a private or attended a private Christian school in that area. So the school previously met with Kayla's parents, telling them that promoting anything outside of school philosophy 
philosophy will not be tolerated. And the school handbook says the school can dismiss students who oppose Christian values. Now, the mother says she didn't request the rainbow cake specifically, just asked for a floral cake. Now, I know when you hear this story, a, a student getting expelled just for a cake, obviously, there's something more to the story here that we're not seeing. I mean, if it is just on, on first first glance, okay, right. a cake, it, it seems a little ridiculous for that. But I of course, so there's the he said, she said between the parents and the school. And so then there's gonna be the discussion of, it's a private school, right? Right. It, so do they have the right to make the rules and if everybody agrees to that, you have to adhere to it? You know, I think if you're a parent who would disagree with that, like a lot of parents probably would, you might say, well, then we'll go to another school, you know? I don't know, I would think that a private school would have the right to say that, whether you agree with it or not, I, but I don't know how that works. That's my initial gut reaction. Well, well, I did attend a private Christian school growing up, probably very similar to that. And one of the things that we have to do is we have to sign a, a code of conduct saying really? we will abide by the rules. So if, for example, not saying in this case it was, right. but if it said we do not want you wearing X, Y, and Z and you wore X, Y, and Z, you would be violation of the school rules. School code, right. Right. So for them, you know, sometimes rainbow can be seen uh, as promoting LGBT, right. which in a private Christian school setting, that may not agree with what they what they say. So in this case, you know, we don't know the full story. Yep. The school said a little bit, the parents said a little bit, but we don't know the deeper story. But in the meantime, this is, of course still has a lot of people riled up on social media. Brian, you've been mining some of the comments there. What, what are folks saying? What's their perspective? Um, you know what, Tahisha, like a lot of people have been like sympathizing with the 15 year old girl. Um, let's take it to your comments right now. As a matter of fact, um, Alan said, uh, give it a rest. It's a child's birthday. You know, uh, Renee says, I think it's unusual, and she thinks the cake was pretty. Uh, Karen said, I feel sad for the child, but I wouldn't want my child to go to such a judgmental school, blessing in disguise. So those are pretty much the sentiments that all the comment, comments excuse me, had to say. That's interesting, yeah, and that's one of those that I, you, people are going to sound off on right. that one. I, I can hear that right now that uh, we joked yesterday at Brian's uh, laptop is smoking. Right. <laughs> that's what will happen with this one because I know people feel pretty strongly about right. this. All right, uh, don't go anywhere because we're coming right back. We uh, left a lot behind in the last decade, you know, but did we leave behind those warming temperatures? Government agencies say no. I asked you on Facebook, what do you think? Are we actually warming up? Go comment now if you want to. A lot of you already commenting and we'll take a look at whether you agree or not. Use the hashtag four to five. We're coming back.
Welcome back to the four to five. Many times you'll hear people saying we just don't get as much snow anymore or summer just seems hotter this year. I hear that all the time and according to scientists there may actually be something to this. So listen to this NASA and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration said Wednesday that the decade which just ended was by far the hottest measured on Earth. And you know what 2019 just the year 2019 was the second warmest year on record ever period. NASA says it looked at global temperature data to determine that the increase is mostly driven by increased carbon dioxide. That would be CO2 emissions and other greenhouse gases that are produced by human activity. Of the 10 hottest years on record, eight happened in the past decade. Yeah, and this is uh, really affecting some of our wildlife here. The same agency is now saying that the temperatures are apparently affecting the chin strap penguin population down in Australia or Antarctica, I should say. Yeah, researchers study penguin population to study the health of the environment, basically, and penguins return to the same nesting grounds every year by comparing different penguin populations. Researchers will see how they adapt to climate change, and penguin population dropped on Penguin Island by 75%. That's huge. In the past four decades, the total penguin population dropped by 50% since the early 2000 teen years there. So you hate to hear that, though, but that's, uh, you know, right. that's a big issue. Yeah, and it's it is warmer. I mean, it's been what almost more than 400 days since we've seen yes. any type of snow a here in the snow. triad. Yeah, and that's that's long. I have to check with Buckley on this because we were talking in the weather center earlier today that uh, we may end up possibly seeing a record of the longest we've ever gone without a decent snowfall. But I don't want that one like we no. had in December two years. No, year that was ago. 12, 13 inches at once. Too much there, that's <laughs> for sure. All right, let's talk about this. So everybody has an opinion on climate change. I asked you on Facebook, do you agree with the findings of the story we just talked about? Is it getting hotter? all the time. Yeah, so Brian Bennett, of course, our social media <laughs> there expert there, you've been mining the comments. Yeah. How do people feel about the overall weather and where we're going? Yeah, a lot of people are agreeing with the reports. Uh, Patty Pat, Pat Perry, excuse me, says, yes, I sure do. It's just confusing trying to figure out what to wear because, you know, one day is cold, one day is hot. You know, I understand that. Uh, Justin says, frogs came out of hibernation last night, early as I can remember, oh. ever. <laughs> Leah says, I don't think so. A few years ago, the lows were in single digits and some of the coldest winters. Uh, she goes on to say that she thinks we're actually in for it come February as far as it, you know, snow and colder weather. So oh, no, don't don't say it. it. Oh, matter of fact, I want to <clears throat> jump to this one with Tim. I think I'm gonna go with Tim. He says the numbers say so, especially with warmer overnight lows, more muggy. Hmm. Yeah. Well, if you do like the cold because you're not a fan of how hot things have been, you don't have to wait long to see no, them. No, you do not. In fact, we're looking next week. There's a chance we could see daytime highs only in the 30s and our normal high should be in the 40s. Let's go ahead and talk about our forecast and some of the numbers. Now we'll show you the winds right now because that's been a concern today. Look at the wind gust at Boone, 49 mile per hour wind gust. That's really strong. 40 in Galax, 35 Mount Airy, low 30s for Winston-Salem and Greensboro. So it's been a blustery day. We we expect winds to stay with us a little bit tomorrow as well. And tomorrow morning, 29 degrees as you make your way out. By midday, temperatures at 40. At least we have lots of sunshine, but it will be a cooler day tomorrow with highs in the mid 40s. We're not seeing a, a great deal of clouds in the northern parts of the viewing area, but the southern half still has it. All of this is kind of pushing down to the south. One thing to note when that cold front moves by, there are a lot of factors that play a role in this, but with the high pressure moving away and our wind shifting a little bit more out of the south, the likelihood of maybe that Saturday morning frozen precip is really more likely of maybe a little sleet in the mountain communities. We're talking about Allegheny, Ash, Watauga counties, maybe parts of Wilkes, but that Saturday morning early, we really don't expect it to amount to a whole lot for us. Again, that overnight low tonight at 29, tomorrow's high 44. Saturday, the high is only 40 though. Sunny on Sunday and 48. MLK day is 39 degrees for a high in sunshine. Tuesday, Wednesday, we are still clear and cold, upper 30s for highs, low 20s for lows warming to 44 by Thursday of next week and all sunshine on that day.
Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to your four to five. I'm Eric Chilton here with Tahitia Moore. Yeah, we are here to inform you, make you feel connected and let you into our world. I want to say hello to Brenda because she is a faithful commenter who's on the four to five stream as we stream live on Facebook every weekday. Yeah, make sure you go to WFMY's Facebook page. That's where we're live and you can comment right there so we can see what you want to say here. Use that hashtag too if you comment on any social media, uh, word four, number two, word five, so that we can see what you're posting. In the meantime, let's get you all caught up on the day with some headlines of the day with your four to five roundup. We're beginning with some international news. Parts of the Philippines turned gray after a volcano unleashed lava and ash. The volcano damaged more than $10 million worth of crops. 44,000 people have evacuated the immediate area and you can see video shows a pineapple farm that just looks like charcoal. Farmers say the pineapples won't be harvested. Nearby coffee and banana farms are also impacted. In the meantime, people around there are wearing masks in order to protect their health. No casualties reported. And the state of Virginia is now the 38th state to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. They just did that yesterday. The amendment outlaws discrimination against women. Most states approved the ERA more than 40 years ago. Now, the amendment did not get three-fourths of the vote that would be needed for ratification. The vote comes decades after Congress sent the ERA to the states in 1972. If there's a three-fourths vote that was granted in 1982, Congress would have amended that constitution. Jumping across the pond now, Duke and Duchess of Sussex. That pair made their first public appearance since Prince Harry and Meghan announced that they would be stepping away from their royal duties. The couple held emergency summits with Queen Elizabeth after the announcement. Now, the Queen said she supports them, but wishes they weren't leaving. Queen Elizabeth is expected to announce the couple's new role soon. In the meantime, Duchess Meghan was spotted in Vancouver, Canada, visiting a shelter there and uh, with some charity over there for young women. Harry met with young rugby players today. Back here in the triad, if you're looking for a job, maybe the Tanger Center could be the place for you. They are hosting a job fair today because they need to hire 200 people. That fair goes from now, it's happening right now, until 8 p.m. So bring your resumes over to the Greensboro Coliseum Special Event Center. Those positions include ushers, box office employees, and guest services. There will also be another job fair happening Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Time to talk about a forecast that, uh, boy, shows some changes coming up here, too. And we're looking at temperatures starting to drop over the next few days. There's a chance that uh, by next week, highs could only be in the upper 30s. How about that? 29, that'll be the morning temperature tomorrow as you step out. Midday temperatures at 40 with an afternoon high in the mid 40s. We will see lots of sunshine. We're starting to see that clearing as we speak. We're uh, actually we're looking at the clouds start to retreat back down to the south and uh, you can see some of the rain down south and west. Will that get here? So the answer is yes, but the question is what form we were talking about Saturday morning being somewhat of an iffy situation. But at this point, I think it could be more of just a little bit of rain for the triad. But if you live in our northwest communities, Eh, we'll say maybe Surrey, Wilkes, but definitely Allegheny, Ashwatauga. You could see maybe a few pellets of sleet. Not a big deal if we see it at all. Look for low temperatures tonight around 29, clear and cold. Lots of sunshine tomorrow, maybe a few high clouds at the end of the day, and we'll see that temperature at 44 degrees. The pre-trial phase of the Senate trial, that's for the impeachment trial, started today. House impeachment managers were formally presented the charges against the president. Chief Justice John Roberts sworn in is now sworn in to preside over the trial. His first job is to swear in U.S. senators. Those senators will act as jurors. The Government Accountability Office said today that the president broke the law by withholding funds from Ukraine. That Senate trial is expected to start next week. So a diet pill, some call the holy grail of weight loss, could now be linked to cancer, possibly here. So an alert was issued Tuesday by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration saying that clinical trials show a possible link with cancer with the prescription medication known in generic form as lorcaserin. Now, the popular name of the drug, the normal name, is Belvic, and the researchers followed 12,000 people over five years. They determined a, quote, possible increased risk of cancer. Now, these results are not conclusive yet, but the manufacturer says they are working to finish the study before they make a final decision on the drug's future. 
So you hear about the importance of getting a flu shot every year, and this is why. Because a four-year-old girl in Iowa went blind after fighting the flu. Jade DeLucia contracted influenza B. Now the virus attacked her brain. She got the flu shot last March, but not for this season. Now this season peaked early. The CDC reports that 32 kids have died from the flu this season. That's the highest number in five years. Doctors say they aren't sure if Jade's vision will return. So when you hear a story like that, it may have you wondering sometimes, is the flu vaccine even worth it? Who keeps track of the statistics and who's really monitoring if it works? So let's verify this for you. The CDC has three designated agencies monitoring flu numbers. Each agency studies a particular part of the flu shot, and that helps the CDC decide if it is actually effective. The CDC tracks cases in research labs in four states, and the vaccine effectiveness is monitored by how many people with the shot get the flu. Now remember this, not everyone goes to the hospital and not everyone gets the flu shot. So there are different hospitals that maintain different data, but from our own research, we found that the flu shot is effective. The worst case scenario is you may still get sick, but it will not be as severe. Well, researchers are now linking a good job market with higher flu numbers. Sounds unusual, doesn't it? Because the U.S. is close to full employment. Workplaces are more crowded, allowing the flu virus to spread more easily. And this flu season is on track to be one of the worst in recent history in number or terms of number of people infected. The flu now widespread in almost every state. Nearly 10 million people have become ill so far and 4,800 have died. Now, the researchers say the numbers should prompt employers to re-examine sick day policies. Retail and food industry workers don't often get paid sick days. Critics say that encourages people to show up sick and spread their illness to both customers and co-workers there. And that right. does make sense. I can tell you that the four to five section of the newsroom sounds like an influenza yeah. ward. We're There's all coughing happening. and Brian's in agreement over there, too. I mean, it, you know, you, going to work sick is not a good idea, but I know some people depend on their salaries. It's a tough balance. And sometimes there's not enough people at work. You right. already know that there's two people out and you're like, I can't call sick because this project's not going to get done or you are on deadline for a special project that has to be handed in that day. And so it's kind of you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Do I go to work and maybe not get that money or do I stay home or do I get that project done? It's hard to choose. You have to burn a sick day too. Sometimes you don't want to do that, but you have to. Right, and that's actually what a lot of people were saying on my Facebook page. So I posed this question, people. I said, do you go to work if you're sick, why or why not? And so we have some interesting comments that people have been leaving, Brian, yep. and uh, a lot of people saying they, they got to go to work. Yes, all of the above that you and Eric just talked about. <laughs> uh, they want to make the money. They don't want to uh, have to use up those days. Uh, let's dive into what you had to say. Uh, this is Dianca. She says, I have and understand why others do. Many employers openly say if you're sick, don't come in, but privately make employees feel their jobs are in jeopardy. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next one here. Uh, Heather says, I'll go to work sick because I don't want to use my leave hours, even if I have plenty, but if I feel bad enough, I'll call out. And next, Cheryl says, they don't openly say this, but if you call out at my job, your hours get cut. And most of us can't afford a day off. So I just say, bring your hand sanitizer. You know, if you it's need true. some gloves or those masks that sometimes people wear at the airport, right. I mean, just come to work prepared, you know? But if you are in those retail jobs, I mean, you cannot be coming in to work sick. You are handling food, you're handling drinks that you're giving to people. It's just, that's gonna cause a ripple effect. That's gonna it cause will. more people to be sick and more people to have to step away from their jobs. Yeah, especially food service. Especially food service. Yes, difficult. All right, coming up on the four to five millennials making headlines again, but it's because of their finance decisions, but they did something good for once. <laughs> I'm so happy about this, how the generation is helping the nation's credit score. That'll be after the break.
Hey, welcome back to the four to five. Come in closer. We got Get something we want to say. We are connecting you to the world around us and we are saying hello to everyone that is watching here on our live stream. I just love how interactive this show is. And we have we have our regulars that hang out in the chat room. It's WFMY News 2's Facebook page, by the way, if you want to jump in and make sure you use that hashtag so we can see what you're saying. We keep this going even during the commercial breaks. Yeah, and a conversation that was going in the breaks, Brian, is people were talking about what to do when you are sick and it comes to the decision, do I go to work or mm -hmm. not? Yep, Cassandra just basically said, if you're sick, you need to stay home. She doesn't <laughs> want to get sick. Uh, and there was also a comment that was taken from your page as well, Tahitia. Uh, Patricia said, I'll go to work, but in between, you know, she'll take a sick day, you know, just in between. So, I think that's good. It's just, yeah. just some time to recover. You have to, because I mean, the, the bottom, you know how it goes through a workplace, and it really does. Oh. If you're not spraying your keyboard down and at least in our place sometimes people other people use right. your keyboard they have yeah. to at certain times so. we can literally like hold hands at the bridge that's so right we're <laughs> close to everybody. everybody's sitting at one table <laughs> and then it's not. one wave and then there's the second wave of the people who didn't get sick the first time so <laughs> right. if you can please just stay wash home your when you work wash when your you stay home from work when you're sick <laughs> all right so let's talk about some money and some of your money headlines the experts say that the food and uh, it, transportation costs, get this, this is what you are spending most of your money on when you add up all the money you spend all year long. Food and transportation, we're talking groceries, we're talking trips to the gas station. So a creditcards.com analysis of government data shows that households spend more than $4,400 a year on groceries. That's the average household there. And over 3,400 on food away from home. So this is restaurants, this is those fast food runs, those Starbucks runs. Gas costs Americans around $2,100 annually, while public transportation users on average have about $800 for the year. That sounds a lot better than the couple thousand for so the So I'm car. looking at that eating out number, and I'm thinking with us, because I have four kids, so there's six of us, right? Eating out is a major right. expense. So I would take some of that money out and put it back into our regular budget, because our regular grocery budget is, you know, I, 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 my wife does it, but I know that when my two teenagers now became teenage boys, it went up by about $600 a month just because they're eating like two adult men now, each of them. And that's something I didn't really even think about. I don't have a family, it's just me. But as your family grows, your budget has to grow too because now you're feeding teenage boys. That's yep. a lot different than Oh, the little tens. ones, you yeah. know, that's a grilled cheese and some fruit, right? right? And then the two teenage boys. If they go, I'm not lying. See, I'm getting on my soapbox now, so I'm sorry. <laughs> if they, Brian's laughing at me. If they, go, if we go to a fast food place, if we're just zipping through, you know, Chick-fil-A, they work at Chick-fil-A, yeah. they'll get two combos each each that's how much they eat so yeah so add that up yeah you go ahead Costs and add that up all right let's talk about for uh families that the, the biggest budget buster for a lot of folks is child care it's really expensive and according to the data released from the bureau of labor statistics child care costs went up 50% from 1998 to 2018. The numbers are shocking. The average monthly cost for child care, this is a full day here, of kids four and under runs $948 a month per kid. Kids five to 14 cost just under $500 a month. So a lot of people, that's why, and I didn't believe this for a long time until I had a lot of kids, that it's actually cheaper sometimes for one of the parents to stay home as opposed to working. Basically what you do is work to pay child work care. Work to pay child care. Right. And I mean, you look at those numbers, $900. Uh, the national average for rent is $800. <coughs> so you are paying Another for rent apartment. just to, to keep your kids, you know, occupied as you go to work. And that's really sad. But I mean, those people who are in the daycare industry, that they need that money because that's a noble work that they're doing, yeah. keeping kids occupied and safe and safe and I, that's what I think a lot of daycares because their insurance must be through the roof right. you know anything happens that's a big deal so we got to pay for it yeah we got to pay for it and yeah. speaking of paying for it you know who has paid for it Millennials Millennials have paid for it I am the millennial crusader I'm telling you my generation gets blamed for a lot of things but today, I have something positive that I want to share with you for once, and this really affects everyone. The average credit score hit a new record to close out 2019. Now, according to Experian, that's a crediting monitoring agency, the average credit score now sits at 703. The spike was thanks in part to a 25-point 
increase in millennial credit scores since 2012. So your credit score is very important. That's what banks use to determine whether to approve you for a loan and at what interest rate. And you really want to get that number as high as you can. So if you want to boost your credit score, experts say to make on-time payments, pay your balance in full, and don't open too many accounts at once. And uh, as a millennial, you know, they say we're not good with our money. So to see that. <laughs> I'm happy to it, see that. It is weird that we've done so many stories on millennials don't have it this much in the bank and, and they spend too much on this, that, and the other, but the credit scores are good. The credit score is good. I'm I mean, we have a credit score, but we don't have any money to buy anything <laughs> because we're still paying off our student loans and we eat avocado toast and Starbucks. So I like avocado priorities. toast. Priorities. <laughs> and we like to pay for experiences. Don't get her started. Okay. I'm Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You wind her up. Yeah. I, I mean, but you know, that's like with every generation. Oh, every generation has their thing. That. I'm the nothing generation because we don't get good labels. At least you're millennial and then there's baby boomer and then, so then I'm like stuck in the middle. We're just the unknown generation. I would say in this case, no news <laughs> is good news. Uh, you're probably right. Yes. Probably right. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the credit scores because I did want to add this too. Building up your credit takes time. And if you do just one thing wrong, that credit score will go down and then it will take you a little bit longer to get it back up. I'll never forget my dad telling me once, I want you to get a credit card with a low amount and I want you to put something on it and pay it off. And he goes, and that's what I want you to do about once every two or three months. And I thought, what, you're telling me to get right. credit debt? you know? And he said, no, no, that's to build your credit score up. I didn't get it. All right, we're gonna take a short break. Now I do though, by the way, a lot Thanks, older. Dad. Yeah, <laughs> we're coming right back. Hi there, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hello, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one.
So here's a common dilemma. Parents, I know you're familiar with this scenario. You take the family out for dinner, mom and dad want a nice meal, maybe a little bit upscale, but the little ones will not touch a fancy grown up dish. So here's your answer. We stopped by Harper's Restaurant at Friendly Center in Greensboro for a little help. Chicken Supremes have always been a kid's favorite. <laughs> uh, probably the number one selling item uh, in our restaurant. We put them on a salad, we put them on an appetizer, and we serve them up with, with a couple sides. This looks good. The sauces are what here? Homemade so dipping sauces. We have wow. a, a, a smoked barbecue um, sauce that we make, and uh, we also have uh, our Supreme Honey Mustard. Uh, it's got a nickname, we call it Cold Dog, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a a whole grain honey mustard, so it doesn't have that French's kind of flavor. It has the, the hint of the Dijon in the background um, with a little bit of a sharpness to it. And it, this is the kind of place that I think even grown-ups order this. You know, this isn't just for kids. I mean, it's kind of the thing. Now, talk a little bit about the family aspect, because you told me you guys did think about that when you put a menu together, because a lot of people have kids, but they still want a grown-up meal. Well, and I think that it's really important that you have healthy, quality options for the children, because that attracts the parents. Yes, we want the parents. We're not making much on the kids menu value, but we're making more. Mom and dad maybe, you know, have a nice meal, have a filet. The kids have the Supremes, whether it's that or they have the salmon. Um, but either way, it's, uh, it's enticing to a family-friendly atmosphere, which is what we've always been, being in the friendly center. Um, and having such a great reputation is just a safe place to go and have a nice meal. It sure is, and the food is not too bad. I leave you with this. And yes, I'll bring back, I know what they're saying in studio right now, bring us back something. We'll get you something back there. Which I, I did. I feel like I can smell Did it right remember? now. Oh, we, it smells so good in my head. Oh, <laughs> and it tastes so good. We brought back ribs and it was so good, so good. Uh, Brian, real quick, we were talking yeah, about yeah. how kids can eat you out of house and home and somebody said something funny. Yes, it was a hilarious comment. <laughs> uh, she said, this is from Miss Powell, she says, you were right, Eric. When my brothers got to be teenagers, they were eating whole chickens. The bill <laughs> definitely goes up. So they would probably need two or three orders of those chicken tenders right? that we saw just to feel satisfied. Our producer Tasha said in my ear at some point, she goes, nobody's eating a whole chicken. I said, oh, yes, they Whoa. are. Yes, they are. There's a lot of boys, grown boys up there eating all the chicken. You're right about that. All right, let's talk about a forecast and uh, we'll look at this for tomorrow and then we'll show you the whole ball of wax here. 44 degrees tomorrow. Some high clouds will develop late. Winds will be out of the northeast uh, five to 10 miles per hour. And Here's your seven day forecast uh, we will go from 44 tomorrow to only 40 on Saturday. Now, mountain and foothill communities, you might see a pellet of sleet here. There's just not likely, but a high of only 40 and for the triad, just a little bit of rain sunny on uh, Sunday and 48 and for your Monday, it's going to be clear and cold all sunshine with a high of 39 upper 30s again and mostly clear Tuesday and Wednesday. Coming up on WFMY News 2 at 5 o'clock, a triad mom witnesses a driver nearly hit her daughter as she was getting on the school bus. She describes the terrifying moments, plus we review the rules of the road when it comes to stop school buses and the penalties if you don't obey them. That's next at 5.